Hi everybody, welcome back to my Daily Dose with Tim. Today is Season 2, Episode 26. You're noticing that uh, I'm doing this one a little bit earlier today because uh, at the end of the week, I'm actually going to be joining a sales training hosted by Burbank Summit. And uh, well, it's gonna be taught by one of the most influential people in my life, Pip Stelic. So I'm super, super excited. So I'm actually getting myself into that rhythm where I'm actually doing the videos this week a little earlier so that I can get it done on the Friday and get on with my day and focus on the training. And this is something that I really, really want to really, I guess, imprint on a lot of you guys is I know that it's really fun to just go on Facebook, you know, turn on TV and just watch people, watch other people's progress, watch other people train, watch people share knowledge and experiences with you at the same time though, I really do urge you to take that next step and really talk to somebody who's actually done what you want to accomplish and living the life that you want to live and ask them how they've done it and take the advice, take the hand holding, take the coaching and move forward from there. So anyways, I just wanted to let you know that's one of the reasons why. And the other reason, honestly, I think a lot of you guys know this. I've had a really, uh, really bumpy month physically health wise because uh, I've been dealing with a lot of side effects when it comes to doing my monthly injections to my autoimmune disorders. And so right now I'm still looking okay. So I figure I go on camera without freaking anybody else out. However, again, a lot of the, a lot of side effects that I tend to get is skin rashes and uh, it, uh, my lips kind of blow up and I get different weird red patches. I know it's not eczema, it's not rosacea. Thank you for some of the suggestions that you've already given me over the last few months here. Um, been dealing with this for about the last eight years now, ever since I got on Biologic. So most months I'm great. This month has been a little tough. And so this is why I wanna do this a little early and before my lips start chapping again and it just randomly bleeds. So I don't wanna subject any of you guys to that. So I'm gonna get the videos done as well. Now, I just wanna really take a few minutes before we really get started. As you guys can see, today is season two, episode 26, and I named it 4.1 because I've been showered with so many Many messages ever since I started doing five ways to financial freedom in five years or less and last Friday I actually shared my journey that I actually haven't thought about in a very long time to be really honest because once you get to a certain point you just decide that you know what you're running a business properties are just the machines it's no different than if you bought a McDonald's or a Tim Hortons or wherever you are kind of franchise at the end of the day, you're running a business. So I sort of lost count there, but it was very nostalgic for me to come back here and share with you the first, what the couple, first couple of years looked like. And I got so many messages and, you know, Debbie, like I said, I was, I was going to suggest, uh, to address this. And many of you are like, are you pulling my leg? Are you yanking my chain? Whatever saying it is that you're accustomed to using, totally fine. The point is, this is 100% my story. And this is why I say my story is not typical. And I've been told that over and over again. And uh, everybody can always argue, you know, property values are going up. It's getting harder and harder. And that's the funny thing. If you don't get started now, do you think it's going to get easier too? I don't think so. Do you think property values are going to go up or down in the long term? I understand we live, we're living through right now, literally, a very, very unprecedented times and situations, and nobody knows. And this is also why we never, I've never, ever stressed on the importance of long-term capital gains, because that's what this game is about. Okay? It's always been about making the best decisions and taking the most calculated risk that you can bear and before we and, bef and so that we can proceed accordingly and most importantly safely because a lot of us we want to learn how to grow our asset our wealth and our income streams steadily and safely that I think that's really what makes this so attractive, especially to me in the very beginning. However, today I want to quickly share with you what, how this came about. So I'm just going to tell you a quick story. The first year, honestly, though, there was actually nothing special about my first year, in my opinion, simply because of the fact that I actually did, uh, some of the deals that I did were JV deals. And some of the, uh, the deals that I did were basically just 
through doing regular marketings as I was taught in class by my teacher. And so again, when you go and take these classes, you learn with every single strategy on how and where you can best locate the client that you need. Same thing, even if you're uneducated, your tenants, your tenants, I want you to hear this very clearly, your tenants are the revenue source. Okay, there's, there shouldn't be that big of a secret in that. However, I understand that for a lot of amateur or uneducated investors, especially when it comes to real estate, we tend to think that there is this opposition between us. Oh, I'm the landlord and they're the tenant. You know, I definitely want to make sure that I control the power, I control the property and that I, I control the entire process. Yes, I talk about control a lot. However, it's not about that. Okay, in any other business, a lot of us, we've heard the phrase, customer is always right. And again, we can all have our opinions and arguments about that. However, at the same time, there are different ways for us to make sure that we get good customers and we can treat them like they're always right. So that why? Because remember, we're using real estate as the main vehicle to generate our income here. And so what that means is it's still subject to, at the end of the day, the simple equation of revenue minus expenses equals cash flow. And so guess what? If you don't got tenants, you don't get revenue. And so this is what we are also always learning to protect as well. However, coming back here, like I said, I did and I chose lease option as my baby strategy to proceed with. And so first year, I basically just went out there and I did a lot of uh, street ads and I leveraged a lot of the online marketing segments of things. So again, depending on where you're watching this from, I know I got a worldwide audience right now. I'm just going to say in the US and in Canada, especially in Canada, because that's where I live. We use Craigslist or Kijiji or RentFaster quite a bit. And obviously these days with social media, you can join a lot of different face group, uh, Facebook groups as well if you want to target a more local audience. The point is though, first year, Nothing special, really just did a lot of the street ads as I was taught. The other thing that I really did though was learning how to position my business and my process and system to anybody who would listen to me. And so I just want to let you know if you refer back to season one, the seven people that, by the way, in Asian culture, this is seven for us, <laughs> seven people you want to have on your power team. Okay, seven people you want to have a power team. Number one is your mentor. Your mentor is actually fairly connected, or at least it should be. And so as a mentor, over the last few years, I constantly connect the students with each other. One may have access to capital to help close the deal and want to get a deal done. And the other person might have access to deals or they're actively looking for deals, but need access to capital. And so this is how we marry them. And then the rest of the power team can actually help you. And those are your realtors, your mortgage broker, your property managers, your general contractors, your lawyers. And I don't know what I've counted so far. However, go back to that episode. I'll put that in the comment section for you as well. The point is though, you have to learn how to position your business and again, most importantly, your process and your system. And that comes from training, that comes from education, that comes from having a very clear mold that you can actually just implement, okay? And so when I did that, that actually opened up a lot of doors. And so that actually got our first 12 deals under the belt. And then year two, I mean, at the time, I'm gonna be honest with you, I really didn't know if 12 was a lot or not a lot because I was in this community where every time I went to a class, every time I went to a mastermind session, somebody's like, oh yeah, I just got three properties last month. And so in my head, I was actually not running that fast. And then, so I just realized year two, hey, if I could do 12, in my year one while holding a corporate job and while dealing with my illnesses at the same time, there is no reason why I cannot be doubling that number the second year. And so I sort of just set it as a bit of a, I, I don't know, like a personal challenge, if you will. And so from 12, doubling up to 24, that sounds pretty good. Two dozens, right? It's got to, it's got to, 
what was that? It's got a ring to it. And so what I ended up doing though was just honestly doing a lot more meetings with power team members because I realized very quickly that the leads or the potential tenant buyers or those who actually ended up being actual tenant buyers, the quality of those tenant buyers are much, much better from especially the mortgage brokers that we work with across the country. And so we did a lot more of that. However, there's one particular thing that I did that I, maybe it's very special to a lot of people. And this goes back to the fact that a lot of you guys know that I moved from Vancouver, BC to Edmonton, Alberta. Okay. And this was in the year 2009. And a lot of you guys, especially if you're watching this worldwide, you probably remember back in 2010, the Winter Olympics were held in Vancouver. And so what that really meant was in 2009, when I decided to move to Edmonton, funny enough, there's probably, I don't even know exactly when, a few weeks later, I was opening my mailbox in, my, in the condo building that I lived in, and I got this letter in the mail. And the mail said that they were looking for one bedroom and two bedroom condos to rent. And I was living in a two bedroom condo at the time. And the only property that I had in my very, very first property as well that I've ever bought under my own name in my entire life. And so as we were looking to start to arrange for the move across the Rockies to go into the province that we live in now, I got this letter and very quickly I called them because I kind of figure, hey, you know what, if you're going to help me find somebody, if you're already going to rent the place for me, it saves me the time and the hassle and the effort of having to put out an advertise, uh, put out an ad and then get people to come through the place and do all that kind of stuff. Very quickly, what I learned was when I returned the call, based on the, the number that the letter was given, they sent out an agent to my place one day after work. And she told me what's happening is that, and, and honestly though, this is how naive and how young I was still, because I had no idea what the scope of the, what the Olympics was going to do for our city. And I didn't even li live in a city of Vancouver. I lived in a city of Burnaby, which is basically right next to Vancouver. Okay. And so the agent came in and she was explaining to me how as a part of preparing for the Olympics. So this is about just less than a year away now from the actual Olympics event. And she was explaining to me that, you know, the athletes, a lot of them are starting to travel back and forth from their home country, home cities to come in, get used to the facilities that they're going to be competing in and train there. Families come, friends come, media people come. And so what that meant was that a lot of, there was a huge population influx and obviously they're not looking for permanent residents. And at the time, I'm pretty sure Airbnb was not a thing yet. And so they were looking for all these condo units to sign six months to 24 months leases with, because apparently there's a lot of things that happen after the Olympics are actually done too. So didn't know about this. So if you live in one of those cities that might potentially have a big game coming up, it doesn't even have to be Olymp the Olympics. It could be anything else that's going to drive traffic into your city, into your town for a while, maybe look into that. And so, I quickly learned that and we, you know, we had a chat and then we talked about uh, income expectations and whatnot. At the time, I'm pretty sure fair market rent was only about at the very most 1700 bucks a month for my unit. However, they were offering 3400 literally double, like literally double. And that's why I was going, oh my God, okay, yes, please, please rent my place. Long story short, that didn't happen. I think they hit their quota already. Maybe I just didn't meet it, or maybe they found a place with a better location in terms of commute for whoever they were placing the tenants in. However, the point is that planted a seed. And so in 2011-ish, when I started to implement this strategy, a lot of you guys know that I actually have a sales background. So what that means is I was not a stranger to picking up the phone and cold calling people, going to knock on doors and dropping in and just to start a conversation. And honestly though, if you met me, you know I am eternally curious about you know humanity, about people and what, you know, what gets them going, what inspires them, what 
gets them ticked off, all that kind of stuff. I'm very curious about people. And so I'm not a stranger to doing that. And so all of a sudden, for some funny reason, after year one, one day I was just kind of sitting there and it hit me that, hey, this is now 2011 and our economy is just starting to bounce back a little bit. And I live in Alberta, which is a very oil and gas heavy um, based economy. And so what I decided to do is, and by the way, I worked for Yellow Pages Group, a lot of you guys, you know that. And so at the time, I just decided I'm going to grab my Yellow Pages at home and I flipped over to the oil and gas services section heading. I think that's what they call it. Been too long. So I went under the oil and gas services section. And I started basically picking up the phone. I had no idea how big or how small those companies are. I mean, we all know the big names in terms of who's in the industry. However, I basically decided that I'm just going to call call. And what I was doing was that I pitched to these companies a transition program, basically, or a relocation program, leveraging lease option. So, so many people, they're just thinking that, oh my God, lease options is really rent to own and we're helping people that cannot qualify for financing. And yes, you know what? We can help out a lot of Canadians. However, I'm an immigrant myself. I remember being buying that condo was such a huge challenge back then as well because qualification was not friendly to foreign buyers and people that had no status yet. And so I understand what it feels like to have to go through that process. And so I just started putting a lot of my life experiences together and what I've been exposed to. And I decided to call these guys and I pitched it, like I said, as a relocation services. And so the question that I would ask is number one, do you have an HR department, human resources department? Number two, is your human resources department planning to bring in overseas workers to come in and contribute to our economy here in Canada or in Alberta? If yes, then I will continue. How do you usually arrange housing for these people? And so as I asked these questions, I start to get the answers and I realized, oh my goodness, a lot of these companies, they actually do bring in talent from overseas. And so they will bring them in. And a lot of the times these guys are married or they have a family. And when they come to Canada, especially from uh, Eastern Europe or the Middle East portion, they actually have the desire to stay in Canada. And so what that means is they're also in the process of getting their permanent residency or start starting their immigration process. Some of them have already started. And most of the times though, they are actually sponsored by the company that's hiring them. And so what happened was long story short, and because of privacy and confidentiality reasons, I, I, I've never been able to share any of these companies with you guys. However, the point is, Long story short, what happened was a lot of these guys are actually brought in on a much higher pay grade, higher level, as in they're usually at the executive um, tenure already in their profession, meaning they're probably in their late 30s, 40s, sometimes even 50s. And so they definitely have a family that's coming in with them as well. And so what we decided to do, and if you, again, we haven't touched on lease options yet. So if you want to go back to season one, starting episode 36, and to just polish yourself up on how lease option generally works, then you'll understand this. Because what's happening is I've just, I, I work with a lot of these companies and a lot of them, a lot of these workers that are getting hired, they actually get a signing bonus. And on top of that, because times are good, a lot of these companies are actually offering housing allowances. So they subsidize their workers on either their rent or they want to purchase a property, whatever the case may be. So they get heavily, heavily subsidized and they get the support from their new employer right here in Alberta. And so we managed to work it out so that a lot of the times their signing bonuses become their initial option consideration. And because these are all people that are a little bit, you know, higher on the pay uh, pay grade. So they usually look for nicer houses. However, they also got the income to back it. So remember income credit down payment. Those are the three major factors that we look at or any lenders look at in order to approve a mortgage for you. And so what really happened at that point was the fact that 
I was able to actually hammer a lot of these things out. And when I started to present these ideas to some of my investors that I was talking to, they basically just go, oh my God. So that basically means that as long as I have the qualification to qualify for the mortgages on these houses that these guys are picking out, their initial option consideration usually covers 70, 80 percent. Uh, sorry, their signing bonuses usually cover about 70, 80 percent of their initial option consideration. So they're in the deals for like twenty, thirty thousand dollars a lot of the times. And so it made it very, very attractive. And so at the time, I was just having a lot of fun putting these deals through. And so this is something that I want to share with you because I realized that what I did was not typical. I've shared this in some of the classes that I've taught over the taught over the years as well, but it definitely has been a while since I've shared that story with you guys. And so I hope that it helps you stretch your imagination. I also, and hopefully that I've given you another way to look at lease options as well. And this is why the reason why when we talk about lease options, I'm super, super pumped to talk about it and passionate about it is because it doesn't just help the people that are in your community. It can help so many others because the bottom line is you can help those who do not currently qualify for a traditional mortgage get into a property of their choice. And so I'm going to leave that with you guys right now. And uh, over the weekend, I also got a super, super awesome message. And again, I haven't asked you yet. If you're watching this, you know who you are. I haven't asked you if I can share this with you, uh, with everybody else. However, I really, really, you have no idea. You've honestly made my day, made my weekend, made my month, honestly. I got a message from somebody saying that they've been following me pretty much since season one. And they were, they, they considered themselves on educated real estate investors. They picked up a few properties over the years. And however, they plateaued and they couldn't move forward until they started watching the video and he just got a multi-family property under their belt as well, leveraging a lot of content that I've been sharing with you in these videos. So that's really all I want. So I really, really appreciate your feedback and your message. You're awesome and congratulations once again. And to everybody else, this is really all I wanna do. If you can help me spread the message, like my message, love my message, comment on it, let me know what you want to see and hear and learn about. And more importantly, share this with the people that you think can really benefit from the content. And so I appreciate you, I thank you and I will leave it at that for today. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with the third way, unless there's a lot more questions on what I've done here. Tomorrow, we're going to continue with the third way in the five ways to, to financial freedom in five years or less. So thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you back here tomorrow. Live well, everybody.